almost pretty, pretty quick in a GT3 car as we approach turn two. Still a little bit of a bump uh, as we get into the apex there, and it's all about trying to keep the minimum corner speed up nice and high. Uh, this place, you know, you do a lap around here in a GT3 car and you, you feel really alive, so it's probably one of the best car track combos you can do in, in the country. Into Honda, big braking zone, biggest in the track, really taking advantage of the ABS on the way in, and on the same way, on the way out, a little bit wide, but really using the traction control. Traffic here to navigate around using the positive camber on the run up now into the hay shed and looking eyes, just making sure we get our, our shifts on time. Probably one of the com most committed parts in the country. A uh, bit of off camber as you get to the top of the crest here, the car gets nice and light, a little bit wider than I would like to be, but the car's right on the edge into the brakes again using the positive camber to round through MG. Last proper corner because with the surface now the last corner is pretty flat so it's just about having the confidence in the car and the tyre and really taking advantage of the aero and committing and that's a lap of Phillip Island in a GT3 Mercedes AMG. That is your chauffeur, Jaden the Juice Ojeda, at the wheel of the amazing six-litre V8-powered Mercedes AMG, more than 400 kilowatts, one of the many stunning marks on the grid, which has now got, excuse me, ladies, sorry, lots of people on it, ahead of the final race of the weekend for Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. Now, we start this one with the pro drivers. For those that have uh, two drivers, pro driver at the wheel. So Chas Mostert is at the wheel of this machine. At the end of his stint, he'll hand over to this guy here in Liam Talbot. Can we dive in here? That fantastic sure. Ferrari 296 GT3 has been superb to watch. What's it been like to drive here this weekend? Don't pinch me in case I'm dreaming. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Like Big thanks to Arise Racing GT and just super privileged to be part of the team and a uh, couple of pole positions and let's see what we can do with the biggest handicap quickly though what learnings out of yesterday and and the you know being mindful of that handicap because that's a that's a factor here to consider for for fans watching isn't it correct i mean it was my stuff up yesterday for speeding in pit lane so we got the drive through uh not the drive through the grid place drop but that was the first time in traffic so we actually learned a lot of information that's going to help us in this race because with the 15 second handicap i'm going to have to come through the field so we've uh, tuned the buggy up a bit more and <laughs> i think uh it'll be even faster today thanks liam go well thank you chris Another one of our supercar stars, his uh, co-driver Brad Schumacher has just jumped in the shot there having a bit of fun, but Will Brown joins me. He's in the Audi, he's got a, a guy he knows well, another close mate, Chaz Mostert, in front. Talk us through strategy, how you think this one will play out, because we know there's success penalties involved in GT racing. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Obviously, Chaz has a 15-second success penalty, and we have five. But, you know, if I can get him at the first corner, that to have. But um, <laughs> it'll be interesting. I've never done a start in GTs. Um, I've raced it a couple of times, but never started. So it's going to be interesting doing a rolling start for me and uh, building tyre temp up in these. But uh, hopefully we can have a good race and uh, come home with another podium. Well, we've loved your time in commentary. We're loving you in the Audi. Go and race your mate. He's in a Ferrari. You're in an Audi. We're all set. Sounds good. Thank you. Unbelievable atmosphere here, Chris, on the grid. I'm literally beside that car of Will Brown with the Kiwi combination of Tim Miles and Brendan Leach, who starred toward the end of yesterday's race when we were confronted with some some tricky conditions. You kind of maximised there, Brendan. Have you enjoyed this? And what's the, the, you know, the plan here in this one? Yeah, thanks, Rusty. Yeah, yesterday was definitely, I'd say, the most fun you can have with your pants on. Um, today, I'm just really looking forward to getting out there, having a clean race. And, um, yeah, see if we can put the pressure on these guys in front of us. I think we have a good car, but I really don't know. The Ferrari and Mercedes are both really quick. So, um, yeah, I'm sure Will will be super fast as well. So uh, I'm sure it'll be busy. Cool. Thanks, man. Thanks for talking to us. There he is, Brendan Leach, does some amazing things with Lamborghini on the world stage in GT cars. You'll see them live here on the screens of Seven right after this. Don't go away.
Back to the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. It's a great day for motorsport and we're getting ready for the second race in the Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. We're up here. We've got the best view <laughs> in the business over a packed Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. More than 17,000 fans That's awesome. have joined us this weekend. That is really cool and so is the GT field. Yesterday's race was an absolute beauty and we set the scene for another one today. An hour of racing in the Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia, powered by AWS, a brand new championship, Richard Crowell, TCR Australia champion Josh Bucken and Greg Rust with you for the next hour, plus our team in pit lane. Lots of stories to cover off. Gee, that grid looked immense, Rusty. What was it like, Dan? Vibe was amazing. And this is part of the reason, as you know, Richard knows this style of racing intimately, right? So GT3 specifications, they have balance of performance measures. So all those great brands, you know, Aston Martin, Audi, Ferrari, we can level the field as we go. We feature amateur drivers, enthusiasts, if you will, alongside some pros. And we'll shine a light on the various divisions, if you will, as the race unfolds. We have the godfather of GT racing with us. He's come all the way from overseas to see how we're progressing. The short answer is, and I know we're pumping our own tyres, I reckon the 2024 season for Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia is going to be one of the best yet. What about the lineup? Mostert and Talbot for Arise Racing. They've made a huge impression with those beautiful new 296 GT3 Ferraris. Alongside them, the guy who took you for the fast lap showed you the way around Phillip Island in the Mercedes AMG there before in Jaden Ojeda. The supercar points leader in Will Brown is alongside Brad Schumacher. They'll be a combination worth watching today as well. Yeah, the Audis looked really strong yesterday and a vibe up and down the pit lane that this is a racetrack that suits that V10 Audi R8. But right now, we've got three different brands in the top three starting positions in this race. Brand new Ferrari 296 GT3 starts on pole position with Chas Mostert. Jade No Jader in that there, Mercedes AMG GT3, and then Will Brown. So turbocharged V6 Ferrari, V8 normally aspirated front engined Mercedes, middle engine V10 normally aspirated Audi. That's why GT3 racing is so cool. They can all do very similar lap times. Josh Buckins with us. It's been a challenging day for your office so far, Josh, but nice to have you with us up here. Uh, we were watching that lap from Jade No Jader, and you were stepping back from the monitor because on cold tyres, he was having a big dig. These things at this racetrack, wowee. Yeah, super fast. I mean, this will make my day uh, from being speared down at Term 1 earlier, watching a classic GT race <laughs> like this. Amazing drivers, amazing cars, amazing commentary team. So what, what, what's not to love? Quickly, are you right for the final TCR race of the weekend? Will that HMO customer racing I-30 be repaired in time? I think so. I'll leave it about halfway and I'll go and find out. So <laughs> hopefully, but I've got a great team. So anyway, they're, they're uh, having fun. So are we race about to go. Only half an invoice for you for this race, then, please. <laughs> As we get set for a rolling start, there will be a compulsory pit stop. The pit window opens 25 minutes into the race. So we'll work you through that with our team in pit lane. But there are some superstars on the racetrack here. There's an AM battle to follow as well that will bring you up to speed with Garth Walton on pole there. But the green flag drops and we're away for race two in Fanatec GT World Challenge. Mostert in the Ferrari. There was an Audi, oh, and coming oh, one. and off, off goes the Ram Motorsport AMG. That's Garth Walden sliding, sliding, sliding all the way down towards turn one. Ojeda, meanwhile, wrestling with Chaz Mostert. He's going to get down the inside of the southern loop, and the Mercedes should wrestle the race lead away from the Ferrari. I reckon Brown and Leach have been going at it. Look at that fight for third place between the Audis. The watching brief from the Triple Eight machine with Declan Fraser at the wheel. Some good battles already, but it's Ojeda who leads the way in that awesome sounding V8 powered front engine six litre Merck from the Ferrari of Chas Mostert. Then it's Leach, the Kiwi, sitting in third. Brown in fourth. Fraser and Jackson Evans. There he is in the second of those Ferraris. Drives ordinarily for Brad Jones Racing. Has done some great things internationally with Porsche. Nice to see him at the wheel of a GT machine back in Australia. What a fiery start. OJ, they're out in the lead. He's done a tremendous amount of miles in Mercedes GT cars over the last 12 months. He's been with Kraft Bamboo over in uh, over in Asia, testing quite a bit. He did the 12 hour as a factory entry, so he's well versed in these machines. If you're unfamiliar with him, thinking uh, Chaz behind is the is the guru, make no make no mistake. 
Jaden knows these cars inside out. Tony Bates assumes the lead in the AM class in the Makita AMG GT3. That's Renee Gracie in ninth place. Starring performance from that car yesterday in challenging conditions with Paul Stokel behind the wheel. So the juice leads the way in the Merc with Paul Lucini to drive that car in the second half of the race. Mostert leech up to third. Now, there's a pit stop penalty time. If you get success in this championship, you get time added to your compulsory pit stop. The net result is that that um, Audi R8, driven by Tim Miles and Brendan Leach, has a shorter pit stop than some of the cars around them. So this is a good opportunity for those guys to get themselves up towards the front of the order, get some track position early. And Garth Walton's going to come into the Ram Motorsport pit and... Uh, have a deep and meaningful, I would have thought, after a really wild ride yeah, down I mean, towards Turn 1. That thing flew through the air as it uh, spun into the infield. So, you know, you're going to want to check what's gone under, gone on uh, underneath that car. Make sure it's all safe and, and good to go. Obviously, it didn't hit anything, but as it flung off the road, it literally landed uh, two, three foot from the air. The 0 to 100 times for these machines are, are unbelievable. So even though we had a rolling start, controlled speed coming down to the start-finish line, by the time he got to the point where he went off the track, still big speed for Walden there. Well over 200. Well over 200. They disappeared from view from where we could see you. And once we could, he was sideways off into the uh, off into the distance. Looks like there's a little bit of damage on the right front. Yeah, they're uh, trying to patch it up there. So hopefully they can get that back out. I think that's the front splitter underneath the car. The under tray goes a long way back between the front wheels under the, basically, the sump of the engine on the Merc AMGs. And it's a massive aerodynamic tuning device on those cars. Yesterday, we saw the in uh, incident with Ben Schutz and the under tray of his car was flapping around. It was loose. So that off-track moment, I'd say, for Garth has dislodged the under tray. They're trying to secure that with 100-mile-an-hour tape. And it needs all of the 100 mile an hour at this place to hold it down. We'll unpick all that for you because while the leaders were squabbling at the front, it was three wide behind. And that was what launched Garth Walden off. So keep an eye on the black Mercedes AMG. Middle of his shot now. And there's contact as Tony Bates comes down. And it was Alex Peroni alongside Batesy. And the three of them made a little bit of contact on the run down there towards turn one. Oh. That is serious. Oh, look at the air. Now, that, that's exactly what Josh was just talking about. As the ground drops away there, watch the air that Walden gets. Well, it doesn't look as bad on that, that angle still. It's, that's plenty. Yeah. It's, it's about six inches more air than you yeah. need. Yeah. Man, if you get dropped on yet at 200 k's an hour, something's going to happen <laughs> if you look good or not. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, that car's just gone back out, it seems. So be interesting to see if it's uh, in, in good shape or not. Unfortunately, the leader's coming up on it. Hopefully, they don't get in the way of this uh, fast battle at the front. I wondered if um, the contact with Tony Bates and Walden might have damaged the Makita Merc as well. His lap times, Tony's look OK. He's down in ninth. I'll tell you what was good. They were... So Renee Gracie and Bates were side by side about a lap ago going down into turn one, and she won the battle into one. Nice work. Good job. OJ to getting his, uh, his flusher going, <laughs> saying, get out of my way, I've got a brand new couple of million dollar Ferrari behind me hassling me. So uh, hopefully traffic not going to be an issue. It's so unnerving when you're in the lead of the race or you're trying to defend from a car. There we go. Excellent work by Garth. I mean, he's a pro. Um, Garth knows what he's doing. Moving aside. The battle commences. And some of the brain power in Arise racing this incredible new Ferrari team that's come together. Carl Reinler there. Yeah. One of the greats. Hello, Carl. Yeah, Carl's got sort of an advisory oversight role in the organisational structure there at Arise, just helping that team with some guidance. I'm sure angling for a drive at some point. <laughs> Actually hasn't raced anything for a couple of years as Carl, but very busy driving the medical car at Formula One races. Yeah. Doesn't Grand Prix a year. But he's a very switched on individual. He understands the sport. It'd be nice guidance from him to help this new fledgling race team. They've got some great brain power down there. We've touched on the fact Adam DeBore is engineering car one with Chaz Mostert. And that was Garth just dropping back and he passed on the back of the motors wall cam. Um, they've got Mark Goddard there from Eurasia Motorsport who's a hugely experienced international race team owner and he's got five of his guys down from Asia to help run these cars too throughout the year. A lot of brain power put together for this brand new race team.
that came out delivering yesterday with a 1-2 result in the first race win for a Ferrari in GT competition in Australia since 2017, back as 12 hour. Pretty, uh, pretty hot pace at the front here. 26.8 is the current fastest lap, but the front three are all in the 126s and they're still going purple in all of their sectors. That means the fastest sector. Jade no Jade are the first sector just then. So these three are checking out a little bit. I think uh, Brennan Leach happily sitting there watching. We know how fast he was in, uh, in race one as the conditions changed. I think he's in a great spot there considering that uh, there might be some pit stop penalty times ahead. So the leaders split by nothing in trading fastest sector times at the pointy end of the field. Pit stops not far away. Jade No Jada leads Chaz Mostert and Brendan Leach with Will Brown and Declan Fraser chasing in race two of Fanatec GT World Challenge. Another fastest up of the race for Chaz Mostert, who's putting that pressure on Ojeda. Now, that car that leads the race has no pit stop penalty time. The car behind does. It will be stationary or will be in the pit lane for a minute and five seconds. From pit in to pit out. That's how it's timed for the control line at either end of the lane. So the mandatory stop time is 90 seconds. So it's 15 seconds more than the cars with no penalty time. That's the advantage that Ojeda is trying to build into that team for Paul Lucchini when he takes over that car, the real to Mercedes AMG, for the second half of the race. It's a good battle there. Just looking at the numbers from Brendan Leach in third, and Jaden Ojeda has responded to the pace of Mostert. Richard just relaying that new fastest lap, that 126.841. Jaden with the quickest time we've seen so far in sector one, so a, a response. Yeah, they, they, they both take extremely different lines in many parts of the circuit. You can even see there, OJ was trying to open up the left hand the second to last corner, effectively making the straight here even longer, considering the last corner is flat. He's doing a very similar thing uh, at turn two as well, trying to attack the braking zone a little bit uh, squarer than what Mostert is. Mostert's coming around turn one, keeping it dead straight, and then having to feed some more lock into the car, making turn two a bit more of an angle, but also making the braking stability a bit easier. So you can see that nice and straight there from Mostert, whereas Ojeda coming in from the angle. So, I mean, look, they're a tenth away from each other in fastest lap there. Ojeda pipping him slightly, but very different ways to drive some very different cars. Yeah, nice. New faster slap just to, to Josh's point there. 26.74 to Ojeda. But Chaz was the quickest through the middle sector, which is just to, to your point. Yeah, the Ferrari's been really good through that middle sector of the lap, the middle third of Phillip Island all weekend long. And Chaz just keeping the pressure on Jaden. It's nice to see young Caleb Sumich down in the Arise camp. He's come out of that system in their Radical program and into Porsches and won the round with a remarkable race three a little bit early on. Seen that on the screens of seven. So he's watching on there. I'm sure he's one of many drivers angling for a steer of one of these brand new Ferraris. Those Mercs, they run so low to the ground as well to maximise the aero. Ride height is a balance of performance tuning measure too for these cars. That SRO, the governing body of GT3 racing, the management of the sport around the world, implement globally. Claude Samont, who is the global technical director for SRO, is here, as is Stefan Rotel the godfather, as you called him, Rusty, of GT3 racing. So all the firepower from the head office are here watching <laughs> the opening round of a new oh, season. Look at that, Mostert on the flash. He feels like he's got uh, got a little bit more up the bag than Ojeda maybe, and he's trying to put him off a touch. Usually if you get onto the flashes, you, you think you've got something and, and you're thinking, right, let's, uh, let's confuse the person ahead. Let's get them thinking about other things other than apexes and tipping it in and downforce and things like that. So Mostert obviously feeling a little bit racy here. Look, you can see he's showing the nose slightly as well, just in bits and pieces. To be fair, Ojeda coming off the, the back of a pretty good 12 months, winning about the six hour twice. I don't think he's going to be too stressed about someone flashing their high beams at him. But uh, interesting to see Chaz feeling like he's, uh, he's putting the pressure on a bit. Maybe he started lower in the pressure or something like that with the tyre. It's an hour stint. So the uh, Ferrari coming on.
Been a bit of a tug of war as far as fastest laps are concerned as our coverage of Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia continues. Chaz Mostert grabbing it last time by with a 1 minute 26 732 as he chases down Jaden Ojeda. He's been flashing the lights in the Ferrari as well and keeping the pressure on the Mercedes driver. Eager to kind of get by given the pit stop time they'll be faced with in that Ferrari. What Liam Talbot talked about on the, the grid of this race. Brendan Leach flipped it back just a little bit. He's just under a second shy of Mostert there now. Chasing hard, but just the body language of that Audi. Not looking quite the same as the Ferrari and the, the Merck up in front here at the moment. Hope you're enjoying this. Still lots of motor racing to come your way live here this afternoon. Round three of the Shannon Speed Series, all as a part of what we call Race Phillip Island. And we're celebrating as a part of that 60 years of Ford Mustang. Some great enthusiasts down here, trackside, cars lining the circuit and all enjoying some great racing. Rusty, we need to say thank you to our guest commentator who's helped us out for the first 18 minutes of this one. Josh, thanks for joining us. Go well this afternoon. Before we let you go, I'd like a tip, please. Who do you think's going to win? Oh, <laughs> Someone in a GT car. Oh, come on. It's Very definitely good. going to win. I, I don't know. I think, I think the Leach car's in a good spot. Obviously, Mostert's got quite a... Uh, Mostert and Talbot have quite a big penalty. OJ, they're obviously without anything, so they're looking pretty racy too. Ah, uh, jeez. Let's go Leach to someone different. OK, nice. There you Thank go. you. Go well, See you, well Thank you. Yep. So just getting some word through as well from uh, Motorsport Australia Race Control. We have Super Cheap Auto TCR coming up this afternoon. In the previous race, the pole sitter uh, was deemed to have um, jumped the start and a penalty was applied. They've since reviewed that. I think some video evidence has come in from the wall racing team and that penalty has been overturned. So it's for... Um, wow. For Brad, that's good news. So we'll, we'll update that. We need to focus on GT racing here with just over 40 minutes um, remaining, but a bit playing out in race control in relation to TCR. Let's go to Chris. Well, Rusty, you know only too well that we can't do what we do here at the Shannon Speed Series without our volunteers. We've got almost 200 of them here helping us to run this event at Phillip Island. And in each round, Shannons are doing their volunteer of the round. So we're at that point now where we're going to present our trophy to our Shannons volunteer of the round this year. Adrian Coppin from Motorsport Australia presenting to Sienna Amos, a flag marshal. Congratulations, Sienna. So Adrian handing over there the pin and also the plaque. Fantastic job, Sienna, a flag marshal. What does this mean to you to be our Shannons volunteer of the round? It uh, means a lot. Being just joined the VFT not too long ago, being probably one of the youngest females in the group um, definitely showing how much the training's helped me to get to the, where I am today and all the Motorsport Australia um, workers that put all the work behind the scenes we couldn't do this without you guys either so it means a lot. Shannon you've been acknowledged for your hard work your dedication and, and how far you've progressed already in particular yesterday 45 minutes waving a yellow flag as we had some repairs to the track how are the arms today? <laughs> They're very tender very sore no, they were quite achy last night, but they're all good today. I'm ready to go again. Sienna, congratulations. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well done, Stubbsy, but behind the scenes, I thought I'd jump in with the team at Arise Racing GT. Team manager, Jordan Noon. I'm going to steal you away from the computer for just a minute, mate. Hey, uh, this team looks incredible. These cars look magnificent. You're a Formula 3 driver of your own right back in the day, and that's the word I'm hearing from Adam DeBore. These are almost single-seaters when you're doing the tweaks on these cars. Would that be accurate? Very much so. Uh, made by Orica. Huge LMP1, LMP2 history. Uh, and you can see that, just how they go together. The bodywork, front rear clips coming off in 10 seconds. It's, uh, they're really sort of next generation machines. And so team manager of Arise Racing GT, how did this come about? How did uh, the deal get put together? Oh, it was all very last minute, I think, it seems. Um, uh, obviously, huge uh, relationship with the Radical team, uh, with Lawrence. Uh, his Big, big deal with Ferrari F1. He loves the brand, loves the cars. Once the 296 came out and was successful in Europe, it just made sense for us to push in here. Is Chas Mostert uh, going to be able to make uh, any any more inroads up on here, or is this just holding station at the moment and then spending it all the right time? Oh, look, I think we're always trying to make inroads. Uh, very confident in Liam getting in next, uh, but we'll just see. OJ is doing a great job. Thanks, Jordan.
Thanks so much. In terms of the lineage of that Ferrari, I mean, we, in more recent time, think of 488 GT3, the development of this car dates back to 2020, and it made its first shakedown at Fiorano in April 2022. It's the return of the six-cylinder for Ferrari as well. 600 horsepower turbo, 120 degree V configuration. Very cool bit of kit. And a million kilos of downforce if you talk to some people. <laughs> they're an amazing thing. We went and had a poke around them last night uh, on our Facebook Live uh, on the Shannon Speed Series uh, Facebook page. And the technology and the construction of those cars is incredible. And Jordan mentioned the front and rear clips that literally 10 seconds, a couple of little clips um, pull the entire front or rear of the car off. Pretty remarkable stuff. So right now they're racing to a pit stop and the pit window opens very soon. The AM cars will be allowed to pit first. But if you've got a pro driver behind the wheel, you'll be keeping them in there for as long as you possibly can to keep uh, punching out the quickest lap times you can to get to that pit stop and give your AM driver the best possible advantage coming into the second half of the race. Speaking of second half of the race, we've popped one champion race car driver out. We've got another one in to help us out for the rest of this Fanatec GT World Challenge race. Todd Hazelwood's up in the box with us. Unfortunately, Marcel Zalua out of his car uh, that won the AM class yesterday. But Todd, good afternoon to you. Fresh from a big race in the Trico Trans Am Series. Afternoon. Thank you, Krause. Yeah, great to be back in the comms box. And uh, yeah, we had a great race just there before, but um, yeah, ready to rock and roll and uh, see what this race is all about and get into my GT groove and, <laughs> and call this race. So look forward to joining you guys. So we might get Cam or Chris onto that story. Just Marcel looked a little fired up there a moment ago, didn't he? So more to that yarn. Not, not keen to talk at the moment, yeah. apparently. So. That's disappointing for that team. They had an unbelievable day yesterday in the AM class in the Valmont Racing here. And his old mate, Sergio Perez, they've been in business together for 20 years. They've been racing together for just about as long. A couple of Sydney boys who love their motorsport and had a great weekend at the Bacchus 12 Hour earlier this year. That race within a race in Fanatec GT World Challenge is hugely competitive. Bring you up to speed with the AM class battle, which is still being led by Tony Bates at the moment. Valentino Astuti just in front of them actually in the trophy class V12 Aston Martin. This is still the race leader. It's Jaden Ojeda. He's still got Chaz Mostert behind him and Brendan Leach has just come back to them in the second phase of this stint, Rusty. And that Audi I think is looking in a really good position once these compulsory pit stops are done. Just a quick glimpse of what Richard was talking about there a moment ago. Valentino Astuti in the uh in the Aston Martin, actually running ninth outright at the moment and lead AM driver. And yesterday when we mentioned his performance in the uh, the coverage, we immediately slipped into Valentino Rossi mode, didn't we? Because you can see one of Valentino's 125cc GP bikes across the road in the uh, in the great museum here at Phillip Island, which is a must-see. So you've, you've got to stick your head in and have a look at some of the cool old bikes and cars in there. And the journey that racing on the island has had that, uh, that dates way back. Exactly. So much history at this magnificent circuit, and um, it dates back to many, many years ago. So, uh, yeah, what an iconic circuit. And uh, I'll tell you what, to drive a GT3 car, race car, around this circuit would be an absolute driver's dream. These guys have a tremendous amount of downforce, have a, a good sticky tyre. And at the moment, this surface, we've talked about a lot about it this weekend, the amount of grip on this new surface here at Phillip Island is absolutely unreal. So these GT cars would be like on tram tracks. So the battle is on, the leaders are running line of stern, pit stops not far away here at the island. Jay No Jay to Charles Mostert and Brendan Leach, one, two and three as race two in Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia continues. This is properly intense stuff between some really high quality operators at the pointy end of the field. In fact, the top four cars have all just set their fastest laps of the race. And the quickest of them all, Rusty, in fourth place was Will Brown at a one minute 26.63. So the pace continues to ratchet up as they race towards this pit stop. Just wondering if MPC's cars, respectively, I mean, both Leach and Brown's machines are in that stable. They're coming to life all of a sudden here. We're seeing good numbers from the Kiwi. We're seeing good numbers now from Will Brown at this point in the race. Now, obviously, as we edge closer to, to pit stop territory as well, they want to ensure that they're as close to those two in front. But uh, those V10 Audi certainly starting to, to come to life now, it would seem. And you can work that into a car, can't you, Todd? You can make your car 
come on a little bit later into a stint if that's what you're searching for in your car setup. Yeah, 100% with these GT cars. They've got a pretty broad window what they can do with tyre pressures, and that's certainly something that the team will be trying to keep in mind. Do they want to give the drivers some confidence at the start of the stint, push on? Or maybe you might start to put, you know, the, the sacrifice is you might start to fade towards the end of that stint, and you know, that could be the potential game plan here for OJ. You can just see that he's just slightly stepping, slipping back into the hands of Chas Mostert. But, um, yeah, interesting strategy. This is certainly not down and out just yet. So um, once we get through this pit stop, it'll be fascinating to see who presses hard early or who comes home strong. Will Brown with another quickest lap of the race at a 1 minute 26.5 now. So he is actually getting to the back of this leading trio. It's about four and a half seconds down the road. Now, the 87 Audi that he shares with Brad Schumacher does have a shorter pit stop time than this car, the number one car that won the race yesterday as they work their way through some lap traffic and negotiate Tony Bates in his Mercedes AMG, who has actually dropped quite a long way down the order after the dramas at the start of the race. So if Will can keep himself within five seconds of that leading group of cars, this entry, the Shore and Partners Kelso Electrical AMG, is going to get track position through the pit stop sequence as well. So the idea in GT racing is that if you win, you spend longer time in pit lane. The goal is to condense everybody up after the pit stops for that run to the flag. Got to say, a little envious of those blokes walking along there <laughs> in Siberia. That is an awesome place to go and watch cars and bikes when they're here at... Uh at the island you get such a great sensation of uh speed but also the the change in the kind of topography of this track and how much particularly you know you come up and over lukey heights and so on it does change a lot Todd, doesn't yeah, it? exactly you can even see even on telecast how much this circuit goes up and down and as a driver and when you're here on the circuit you visually see the difference it's one of those circuits where you really feel alive around the, around the circuit because there's so many different corners although they're very fast and flowing None of them are the same. They've all got their own little challenges behind the wheel, and that's what makes this circuit so much fun as a driver. And, um, hey, you know, who doesn't love doing laps around this circuit? But um, it's interesting watching Will Brand here. He's the only driver in his top three outside of OJ, obviously. He's got clear air. He's using that to good advantage at the moment. So while Chaz is parked up behind OJ, and the same with the, the, the leading Audi, Will Brown's out, he's, he's got that clear air. So that's going to be helping his tyres, helping the engine keep cool, and he's using that, using that to full advantage right now. Mark Sini in the pit lane, the Conduras Mercedes, and I think Tony Bates is back in the lane as well too, so... Shannon Speed Series continues here live at Phillip Island. Final race of the weekend, the Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. We are, as you can see from the clock, just about the halfway mark of this race. Bit of pit stop activity is happening. Mark Sini in the lane in the Hallmark Audi. The Conduras Mercedes leaving the lane just ahead of him as well. I think Ash Samadi is in the lane too. So so seeing Tony Bates, who was involved in that contact in the early part of the race with the Walden Merc back into the lane. I think that's the second visit for that car. So, um, you know, whilst in, on the one hand, we'd probably be thinking compulsory pit stops, there is obviously something more going on with the Makita machine. Jada leads by 0.5. Jazz Mostert. In fact, it's six tenths now. Leach churning, churning out some pretty handy laps. The quickest driver of the race is Will Brown with a 1 minute 26.53, which is a new lap record too for GT3 cars at this venue. It went yesterday at a 26.8. Jack LeBrock held the previous lap record here. Your teammate at Erebus Motorsport, uh, and it was set 11 years ago in an SLS AMG when he was a very young version of Jack LeBrock. <laughs> he's not that old now. No, he's not. He's no, exactly. Say it, but, uh, back when he had hair. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> exactly. So the way the pit stop action works is the M entries can pit first. Their window opens first for five minutes and then the pro M cars can peel off into pit lane. That's why these leaders continue to run a pace. And all the AM cars have now been into pit lane. Valentino Astuti's in there in that glorious V12 Aston Martin. Garth Walden back in, but with more dramas after going aerial early at the start of the race. 
and the Valmont Racing Car will get to the bottom of that as Ojeda gets to Ash Samadi at a really awkward point of the racetrack. So Ash on cold tyres and gets gobbled up by the leading trio who are now locked together. Mercedes, Ferrari and Audi, nothing between them. You could throw a blanket over the top three now. It's just about to commend Ojeda for just pulling a bit of a gap and it just diminished just in that little bit of lap traffic there. And I tell you what, that is the worst spot to get lap traffic. Turn one, these cars are oh. passing. Battle for second, here we go. Leach is energised here. That Audi's been coming on stronger with every lap. So he showed the nose down at Miller Corner there, but was on the outside, not the ideal place. So Chaz keeps the spot as they exit Siberia now, and that has helped Ojeda just get a little bit of breathing space for now. Now the pit window is open for the Pro-Am cars. It opened at 30 minutes into the race. So they're going to get, they can get two laps, I reckon. Maybe one more. So do you pit now or do you wait just one more lap? Squeeze a little bit more out of your pro driver. But if you're a rise racing and you're struggling a little bit, perhaps you get your car into the lane early. Do they peel off? Not this lap. One more at least for our leading group of cars. And then the AMs will jump in for the run to the flag. So Paul Lucchini will take over the real to Mercedes. Liam Talbot, reigning Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia champion, the Ferrari, and Tim Miles, hugely experienced pro-am racer with victories in GT, in Audis in the past, and a lot of success in one mate Porsche competition. He'll take over that Audi R8 that's flying at the moment. So Renee Gracie is in, she jumps out. Paul Stokel gets behind the wheel of the OnlyFans Audi, and he did a, it was like he rewound the clock yesterday to his years of Gold Star competition and of racing in Formula Holden and so on. He was dynamite in that car. So they're down in eighth at the moment. Let's see what happens when the stops kind of shake out here, and if he can get the same sorts of performance of lap times out of that car in the back end of this race. Anything that allows me to talk about a Reynard 92D so on live good. television, Rusty. But he was awesome yesterday in really challenging conditions. And had that car in the top three in his stint. I'm really glad that he and Renee have paired up for this year in the championship. I think they'll be a quite effective combination. And Renee's only going to get better and better as the season goes on. And a long time between racing for her after Carrera Cup. And into the pit lane comes the Ferrari. So Chas Mostert peels car number one off. Ojeda and Leach can go around one more time. Now Todd's, Todd's winced a little bit there. Just that, that right front locked up at the line. Are you a bit worried about crossing the... I am, yeah, because Chaz was actually locked up. He actually had to overslow it over the line. So depending on how the pit lane speed works, if he actually went over the line or if he's actually pulled it up enough. But if he's actually overslowed it, then he's going to lose time as well. So that could be the difference between second and third when, when these guys rejoin after their pit stop. So in the meantime, and, and both Ojeda and Leach, who are already <laughs> largely tapped out anyway, are now being asked to extract even more from the Mercedes and the Audi, respectively. There's Liam Talbot. Collected his trophy at the Motorsport Australia Awards in February after our Sandown round, after a very, very memorable year in 2023 for him. The sister car is in the lane as well. So Jackson Evans will get out of that car. Elliot Shoot now climbs behind the wheel of the sister Ferrari. And these two, meanwhile, left the screen, are definitely on an inlap because there's purple sectors everywhere. Jaden Ojeda and Brendan Leach are pushing on trying to extract the maximum amount of on-track time they can from these cars before they peel off into pit lane. Now, they'll need to pit this lap, otherwise they'll be outside the pit stop window next time by. And here they come, attacking that pit lane speed line that Todd was a little worried about before. And then how much ground can Brendan Leach gain? And it's a couple of car lengths as they slow down to 40 k's an hour, which must feel interminably slow. Now, this is the difference in compulsory pit stop time. Oh. So he's been jumped by the BRM Audi and has to stop and give way the Ferrari. Had to give way to Schumacher, I think. So, so the Triple Eight Mercedes, I think, was able to leapfrog and Brad Schumacher. Now, is there a problem with the Ferrari on the way out of the lane here? Is it slowed? Yeah, it can't fire, Rusty. I think it's gone into an anti-stall or something like that. It's directly below our commentary box and it's making really bad noises and now it goes and, and it finally gets going, but it's delayed the other car massively. So that costs Elliot's shoot enormously as well.
that's helped Peter Hackett, I reckon, here. We've got to see what happens with the Leech and Ojeda stops once that shakes out. But the Triple Eight, Merck, I think, was able to get clear of all of that as it unfolded. And now oh. the Ferrari's gone. That is Liam Talbot. Car one's gone around. Now, is that a case of uh, frustration of what's just happened in the pits and he's looped it, or something going on here? We're not quite sure, but uh, I tell you what, Chaz Mossett must be gutted. All that hard work, that fantastic stint, gone down the toilet. You, you guys are big on, on procedure, having things happen as seamlessly as possible. When you get rattled by something like this, getting all the nerves back under control is key, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And you can see he's gassed it up, seen the car on the right-hand side, make it painful, he's stalled it. And then something's happened here after he's maybe turned off the pit limiter. Let's have a close look here. Or did the limiter disengage? Now this is the moment. So he's gone through turn one. It's been sitting still for 105 seconds. He tips the car into the southern loop. It almost goes, he catches the rear and it slides. And it just looks like a cold tires moment, unfortunately. So that's, uh, oh man, you got to feel for him because you could see him getting in the mindset just before that pit stop and he looked comfortable, he looked relaxed. And I'll tell you what, that's, that's motor racing at its worst. Uh, yeah, feel for these guys, but um, that's, that can happen. So. It's all happening here at the uh, here at Phillip Island, that's for sure. Chaz's body language. I know we've got a bit to play out here, 21 minutes, but just how competitive this field is, it's a, a despondent figure who I think feels like it's gone, obviously, given what's happened there. So Tim Miles leads this race in the Dale ITM Audi that he shares with Brendan Leach. This car was running in third until the pit stops. The Kiwi, who's been running in Porsche Carrera Cup in recent years, has stepped back into GT competition. He's known Brendan Leach since he was a teenager. They're both from the South Island of New Zealand. Nice for them to be pairing up for this. They're ahead of Ojeda. Brown. Now, we need to double check the timing no, there. That, that'll be Paul Licitti behind the wheel of that yeah. uh, 66 car. So the juice will have jumped out. So Tim is now the leader of the race. No pit stop penalty time. He got that advantage, was nice and clear. And he's now two seconds to the good. And it will be Brad Schumacher behind the wheel of the 87 car in third position. So 6.2 seconds behind. Then Peter Hackett behind the wheel of Triple Eight in the Mercedes AMG, 13 and a half seconds behind. Then in fifth place is Mark Rosser. That's the ACM Finance Team BRM car that he shared with Alex Peroni, 16 seconds behind. But the damage to the Ferraris, so they lost 15 seconds in a pit lane penalty time, but they're 30 seconds behind the lead now, Rusty. That is a very, very big margin. Schumacher in recent years, Brad Schumacher's absolutely come on strong as a, as a driver. He's going to be one to watch as this continues to unfold. We've got 20 minutes remaining. So, Miles leading the way from Ojeda, still a minutes to go and this whole field could concertina up with the AM drivers now behind the wheel but in the absolute box seat is Tim Miles a brilliant opening stint from Brendan Leach it's so cool to have that fast Kiwi racing here full-time this year he's moved across to live here to compete full-time some of the family are here as well, Rusty, which is great to see. They were putting, I'm told, a function on down at Southland Car Club in Invercargill at Teratonga Raceway to cheer them on. So I'm sure they'll be watching on and uh, get out to everyone there in the South Island cheering on their boys. He's been uh, doing some racing on the international scene, as you know, and the ambitions there are still not done. He's been with Lamborghini until he gets himself settled here in Australia. He's been flatting with some colleagues in James Pavey and Simon Chapman on the Gold Coast journalists and, and uh, PR uh, uh, types, if you will, that we know, both very good operators. But I think the plan is that he'll be moving to Sydney in the not-too-distant future. <laughs> so, not that we're suggesting they're wayward types for, for uh, any, any stretch. Back we go. This is a feisty little battle, Todd Hazelwood. Isn't it? You can see the flashes here on the Makita uh, Mercedes there. So this is tightened right up there at turn two. You can see the Makita entry right up the backside of... Uh, 
These two Mercedes are locked right together. He's still got the flashes on coming out of turn four. So um, this is uh, looking spicy. It's Theo Kondouris behind the wheel of a Superbahn Supermarkets car in front of Tony Bates. Ooh, Ooh and that's cool. just, Well, I was going to say, you don't want to get any closer than that, but that's a little bit too <laughs> close in my opinion. So Rubbing's racing, pressing on, but um, they're getting real close. But uh, the one thing you've got to be careful there, that number 24 entry, he's going to have a little bit of front damage on that front splitter now. And we all talk about how sensitive these aero cars are. And if you just lose that little aero fairing on the corner of your, of your front splitter, it pays a massive price on a circuit like here at Phillip Island. Fast corner at the last corner, fast corner to turn two. It just keeps carrying on, so you might be punished from that little bit of damage now. And, and uh, that's the key word. It's only a little bit of damage, but it has big impact, doesn't it? 100%. You know, we're talking about hundreds of kilos worth of downforce on the front splitter. And just that little bit of difference on, on the left front to the right front can be massive. And, and then that's when you start to see drivers start blocking brakes and making little mistakes. And that can simply just come from that little bit of damage on that front splitter. So... One to watch moving forward. Todd Hazelwood with us in commentary. Greg Rust and Richard Crail with you. 17 minutes remaining in this GT3 race live here at the island. Lots more still to come your way this afternoon before we're done with our coverage. The view from on high. Island looking magic today. It's been a little on the, the chillier side, but no real rain like we had yesterday. And that made things in the... The racing that we brought you on Saturday, interesting because it was sort of this intermittent mist at times, wasn't it? And it made life, particularly on, on slick tyres, enormously difficult. This battle between second and third is now really starting to get tasty. Brad Schumacher looking racy. The Bathurstian, which is a thing, <laughs> it defines someone who is from Bathurst. In fact, to be more technical, he's a Kelsonian because he's from True, Kelso, man. the other side of the river. The Kelso Electrical, for those of you familiar with your Bathurst geography. Hello to everyone watching on SRO's GT World YouTube channel as well around the world. This is the fight for second and third place. Paul Lichetti under pressure from Brad Schumacher. Tim Miles still the leader. A great fight brewing to the chequered flag in race two of Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. Final quarter of this GT3 race live here at Phillip Island is about to get really interesting. You're watching the fight for third position. So Brad Schumacher, as we talked about, we knew there was some pace in that Audi. We talked about his continued improvement as a driver, and that's really being demonstrated here at the moment. And it's all working in Tim Miles' favour. Our race leader now has 3.5 seconds. Make that 3.7 in the pocket as these two continue to argue. Yeah, Schumacher is applying the blowtorch at every opportunity. You can see he's sticking the nose in on that Audi every opportunity that he gets. And I tell you what, number 66 wouldn't want to be looking in his mirrors because <laughs> he'll be able to see the rings on those Audi signs pretty clearly, I reckon. So, um, yeah, this, this battle is heating up. As we can see, Schumacher, he's tucked in the toe. And I reckon the sweet spot here is turn two. We saw him have a sniff here at the last lap. Pokes the nose out for turn one, not quite. Well, let's, we'll keep a watching brief on that. And as we do, let's get some news from the lane. Let's go to Cam. Yes, I've grabbed Chas Mostert straight out of the truck. He probably doesn't even know what happened, but what happened was um, there were some alarms coming up on the dash for Liam Selby, and he had to cycle the engine, so he had to power it off and power it back on. That was what happened at pit exit. Chas, I'm not going to ask you the technical elements because you've been getting changed, but, uh, mate, the car looked like you were fighting hard with OJ, but just didn't have the speed to get around him. Yeah, just um, kind of lost out on the start there. We, we ran a, a brand-new tyre, so I really struggled just finding that... Um, getting it in for the first lap or two, so I lost out to Ojeda. Um, we ran side by side for a one-two there, but he got the best of me. Um, I thought we had the pace on him, but um, like a lot of these cars, and then this weekend too, with quite a higher tyre pressure, just the way this track is, we want to make sure we're looking after him. Uh, we just cooked our front tyre pressure behind him, so it was just a bit of a stalemate there. I was trying my hardest, but couldn't quite get back around, but then um, after that, I'm not sure what went on. So, um, yeah, we pitted, and then um, drop change was all good. But uh, as everything goes on when you're driving, you're getting your helmet off and all that kind of stuff, uh, chaos can happen within a minute or two. So, um, yeah, really shame for Liam, whatever's happened out there. But um, I'm sure he's pushing hard to try and make up every position he can out the finish. Yeah, last question. Um, you said the car cooked that front as in sort of started to overinflate most likely or just didn't give you the performance. Amazing how a car like this with such minuscule tweaks can make big differences. You can have a car that's in the window one day 
And do you think it'll be back in? Can they get it back under control for the rest of this race? Did you bleed a bit of air out in that last, last stop? Oh, they would have, but obviously whatever's happened and where we are on track now, the damage is done. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It looks like we lost a lot of time for whatever circumstances. So even if you've got the tyre pressure a little bit more at the window, I don't know if we'll make up that much time. But Liam's a super skilled driver. We know what he can do in this category. Uh, but like I said, I just, I just came out of the truck, came straight to you, so I'll go have a look at the monitors and work it out. Thanks, Jess. Thanks. Hi, Ree Everly. Coming home tonight. See you soon. Joined by Brendan Leacher. I think uh, we're all nominating for driver of the day so far. An outstanding first stint out there, mate. How was it? How was the car? And obviously, Timmy's in the car. You're in good hands at the moment. Yeah, ABC have given us a great car today. Um, hey, look, I was having a lot of fun out there. It was great with the running with the guys at the front. Um, yeah, super quick pace and uh, just kind of sat there and was quite happy. I was lucky to have it. Well, God was able to have a try at the end on Chaz, but it was just a bit of fun more than anything. I think nothing was going to happen. But yeah, um, yeah, just Timmy just has to bring the car home now. He's doing a fantastic job so far, and, and you know the key for us is just points, 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 and, and maybe we can get on the podium. But who knows? Guys, just detailing before Southland at the car club. There, there's a bit of a function they're getting behind you. Yes, absolutely. Hi to everybody in Southland that's uh, that's tuned in today. So um, yeah, really, really grateful to have such a great support base here and over in New Zealand and over in Europe as well. So family, family everywhere. So yeah, it's fantastic. You've got some of your housemates here as well. We've been talking about that a little bit earlier in the coverage too. How's the diet going with the three of you guys living there, just batching it up? <laughs> yeah, good. Look, you know, Chappie and the paver, they're uh, they're good buggers, and we're yeah, we're definitely looking after ourselves. That's that's keeping our skin tight, you know. Mate, good job. Well done. Great racing today. Great enjoyment chatting with you. Well done, and hopefully uh, you can salute at the end of it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Should yeah. say good day as well to his brother, Damon Leach, who is the senior instructor at the Highland Circuit on the South Island. Very good racer in his own right. He'll be watching, no doubt, with Joseph Scalana and all of the, the team down there. And I've been very fortunate over time to go to the Leach family um, house on the South Island. They have a meal. His mum is unbelievably... Uh, a real foodie, but his dad has a workshop and they restore some seriously cool race cars. The, the racing, I cannot begin to tell you, in the Leach family blood runs deep. They love it. Yeah. Formula really One car in that fleet. All sorts there? in there. Yeah, There's yeah. all sorts in there. Well, they're not getting the champagne just yet, Rusty, for Mum's dinner because this is a battle for the race lead. Brad Schumacher has been pulling time out of Tim Miles. It was two seconds, then it was 1.3. It's now four Audi R8 lengths, maybe a little less. So Brad has hauled in Tim Miles, vastly experienced uh, Kiwi, now lives in Sydney. I'm sure wife Trace is watching on at home, but he's under some pressure. Is Miles he, in just his second race back in this car? Now he has got prize in this category. He has been successful in the past. He had a season with Jackson Evans as a co-driver in an Audi R8 with Melbourne Performance Centre. But this is a whole new kettle of fish. And right now Brad Schumacher is looking really racy. And as we saw recently, Schumacher got the pass done on the last time he moved into second, going to turn four here. So that's a little bit of a sweet spot. He does seem very strong under brakes compared to Miles as well. So. Maybe it's only a matter of time, but um, Miles has recognised it. You can see he's trying to break the toe down the front straight. A little bit defensive there in the turn four at Honda. It's going to be a fascinating battle between the two Audis. How do they manage it in the team? A couple of guys have done very well for themselves in business. This is their game of golf, and they treat it really seriously. They enjoy the escape, the challenge that motor racing brings them, and it, it helps them get away from all the, the ordinary Monday to Friday seven till nine pressures and I, I quite yeah. literally mean those sort of times for both of them. Tim with the Miles Advisory Partners firm has been involved with some some big business sales over time. We worked very closely on the, the tendering process when Supercars was up for sale on more than one occasion so he, he's one of the most stand-up blokes you'll ever meet too. Fiercely passionate about his motorsport and helping young racing car drivers out too. Right now it's all about him though. Schumacher in the toe. And looks to get a bit of air on the nose of the Audi R8. They've all been complaining about aero wash this weekend, which is when you get in the dirty air of the car in front, the car behind just wants to understeer and not turn in. So they're always showing sort of half a, half a car width wide. The driver's saying it makes all the difference in getting front grip. But catching in these cars is one thing. When you're in that dirty air, Todd, it becomes very difficult to execute a move. Yeah, 100%. And it's a, a really good point to pick up and watch the car 
obviously behind the, the, the leading car because, yeah, if you get that nose out into the clear air, you can just get, if you can get half a bumper worth of downforce or fresh air on that front bumper, it makes a massive difference on getting load on the front tyre, getting the front grip, but certainly you're going to be compromised because these cars are so fast around the corners. If you've got that car in front punching a big hole in front of you, you think, oh, you're in a slipstream, but no, it actually works opposite effect because you're not getting the downforce on the front splitter, which, you know, obviously gives you the understeer through the face of the corner. So these long flowing corners, Schumacher needs to get it done because otherwise what's going to happen is eventually going to work his tyres too hard and then that's going to give the advantage oh, to Miles, he but looks, he's showing he looks, nose. He's on the outside for 11 and 12. That's not ideal, but if he can stay close enough, stay in the toe as they come down the Gardner straight here, just over seven and a half minutes remaining. Question for me is, what has the, the recent years at the wheel of an Audi from an advantage standpoint, what is that worth to Brad Schumacher? Now, remember, Tim's been racing Porsches in more recent time, has switched to this Audi. Schumacher looking aggressive down into one. Great defence from Miles so far. He's got to hold on for just over seven and a half minutes. 30 seconds down the road. Liam Talbot has just set a new lap record in the Ferrari. So with those dramas behind them, he is punching out purple sectors. He's still a long way behind, so he's not in this race yet. However, if these two get properly stuck into each other, who knows how this could play out. This is classic GT3 racing. The races build and build and build and the strategies play out, the pit stop stuff plays out and you get to a great shootout with racing car drivers behind the wheel of great racing cars. And that's what we want to see. Full credit to, to Melbourne Performance Centre. This great race team based in Melbourne, southeastern suburbs. They have been a staple of Audi sport competition in Australia basically since GT3 racing started in this part of the world. They have been hugely successful there's been a lot of questions over Audi's future in GT racing, but they are still flying the flag. Miles a little bit deep. Schumacher's going to be on the outside again for another lap. This is great defensive driving by Tim Miles. He is holding on to this race lead for everything. There's only six minutes to go. Sweet sounding V10 engine, something like 585 kilowatts, both under the umbrella of Melbourne Performance Centre. Look at Schumacher right in the draft. He pops out, looks to the inside as they run down to one. Tim will be on the outside. He swings the nose across and says, I'm hanging on to this. Awesome Tremendous. Yeah, that's really good from Tim Miles. He's been out of workout now where Schumacher is faster around the lap. He knows he's a little bit weak over Lukey Heights, but he's able to defend and he hangs on for the rest of the lap. So. What do you reckon Will Brown's thinking right now? I reckon he'd be thinking, come on, come on, Schumacher, get it done, get the pass done, because clearly he's got a fast car. He just needs to make a nice, clean move and get it done. It, that, the Shore and Partners car came on so late in the pro driver stint. They gave away just a little bit of time early in that race, and I wonder if that's just going to cost them a little bit here. If Miles can hold on, that could have been the difference. But this has been such a great battle. Five minutes remaining. Where does Brad Schumacher find a hole in this defence of Tim Miles? Oh, is it at Lukey Heights? Heights. Oh, oh, that's tight. big. That's a fast corner in one of these cars. And as you can see, Miles defensive once again. Oh, oh. but he's pinched a brake. That gives you the incentive for Schumacher again, but he just can't quite get that switch so, back done. Someone's run to the limit of there too. I don't know if there it was, was Tim. Miles. Yeah, he ran right to the limit of there. So we're a little rattled now. So we saw a shot of Will Brown there a moment ago with the team looking after Brad Schumacher. Leach will be there with the crew that look after Miles. Here we Love go. Love to know what the bits of advice are to these two as it continues. I can see the godfather of GT Racing glued to this without Chris Stubbs. We'll come to that. Will Brown watching on here. They are so dead even in straight line speed. It's not funny. They must have exactly the same wing angle because as soon as he tries to get that little bit of a side stuck and get the draft, as soon as he hits the clear air, he can't get alongside of him. So, man, that must be frustrating for Schumacher because I feel like he's got the pace, but awesome car placement by Miles. This is setting up to be a... A drag race to the end here. What, what a race. Just just containing it all. There's Brendan. Oh, There's Simon Chapman. Got him, got right. him, He's got him. Down the inside. But if Tim can hang on, he'll be right at Siberia. And he does. Nice. He just left enough, just enough room there on the inside just to incentivize him. But then you're on the inside for Siberia. So awesome car placement there by Miles. He didn't turn down on him. He acknowledged the fact that there was going to be a car there, but just set himself up for that exit drive. So... Um, Fascinating battle for the lead. We, we, I mean, this category has some great races. You've just seen Will Brown a moment ago. We've talked about Brendan Leach's history with 
Lamborghini abroad. We know Chas Mostert is a part of it. These are two amateur guys going at it here. This is great. This is awesome racing. These two are terrific AM drivers. They're the gentleman drivers in the combination. But what a show they're putting on. Brad Schumacher, he was so proud a couple of years ago to become a factory Audi driver. He drove for the factory team at the Bathurst 12 hour. There are the two co-drivers watching on alongside at Melbourne Performance Centre. Troy Russell and his boys, Trent Levi, who's the crew chief down there. They've got some great engineers on board for this weekend as well. All watching on. There's nothing anyone else can do now. It's up to these two blokes. They've got less than three minutes to hold on. It's probably three laps of Phillip Island left. In an incredible opener to Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. Among the supporters that's come over here from Dale ITM in New Zealand is Deb Day. She will be biting the nails right about now in that pit garage. So Tim's got to hang on for two and a half minutes here at the moment. How Schumacher under brakes, Todd. Schumacher is super strong under brakes, but what we can see, it is starting to hurt a little bit in the high speed cornering. So he's been parked up behind Miles now for a few laps. He's been trying to make a pass, and that eventually does punish the front tyres. So what Miles needs to do now, he needs to get in the mindset, look forward, don't stop, don't keep looking in that rear vision mirror because he's probably got the upper advantage now with the you know fresher tyres. He's been in the lead now for quite a long period of time, so. As long as he covers himself under brakes, because as you mentioned, Schumacher, look how good he is under brakes. He gets that out of his nose right in there. But the dead even from this point onwards, he just gets that little bit of arrow wash, second to last corner. But he, I tell you what, Schumacher is very strong in the last corner. Even though he's getting a little bit of arrow wash, he's able to get the slipstream effect here. He's not getting penalised with too much time. He uses all the rope, whereas Miles is probably just half a car off the kerb. And that's probably just enough for, to incentivise Schumacher just to have a look but he just can't get quite close enough. Just to touch on one point the AM class leader is Ash Samadi in another Audi so this has been a really good day for MPC so far there's no room down there at the southern loop for Schumacher so Samadi Bates and Theo Kondouris one two and three in the AM class but this battle for the lead is what we're all watching. What a race. Res respect to both of them here they are not immersed in race cars like Todd Hazelwood, like others, Monday to Friday or seven days a week for that matter. They're business people who are going racing and it's a lot to ask of them. And they're driving against each other here with, with real smarts, good respect, and it's enjoyable racing. 100%, you, you mentioned that this is their game of golf. Well, I'll tell you what, this is the most intense game of golf I've ever watched. <laughs> this is super impressive stuff by the two guys out here in front. They're putting on a spectacular show for us. And um, there's less than a minute to run in this race, so it is truly going to be a one-lap dash coming to the end here. So here goes. Listen, listen as they come out of MG. Tim's been hitting the limiter. Let's see if that happens again. Short shift. No, short shift. Just Learning. changed up here, yeah. Rusty. <laughs> so he caught you off. He must be hearing you on the on the big on the uh, big screen here. But um, again, Schumacher gets a nice run through the last corner. Can he set himself up in his nice slipstream? He's got to run. If this race goes another five laps, which it won't, Liam Talbot will cruise up to the back of them because he's been punching out lap records down in fifth place. Schumacher again just gets the nose out to try and get more air on that front wing of the Audi into turn one, but Miles's commitment down there has been absolute. He just leaves half a car with there at the southern loop as if to... Oh, 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 he's gone! He's gone! Schumacher's gone! He went up the inside at the southern loop. He had the spin, he's kept it going, and he should drive out of this, but that'll be the motor race. As the clock winds to zero, Tim Miles and Brendan Leach find themselves clear in front. Now what Schumacher needs to be careful of now, he's just spent the last 20 seconds on grass, and now he needs to be, be careful that he's acknowledged that, and doesn't press on too hard, and makes another mistake, so... Oh, oh. Talk about an epic race. That was uh, that was always brewing because both drivers were hustling for position. They both wanted the race win, and unfortunately, it's just come unstuck. So you can see he's tried to incentivise himself to get a really good run. He got the nose in there, but just got crossed up. Probably tried to avoid contact. To be fair, so unfortunately, he's probably rather than making contact with Tim Miles. He's actually sacrificed himself. You can see Will Brown. He knows what's happened there. He's gutted. But uh, it's all happy days here for Tim Miles, so he can breathe now. He's probably been holding his breath for the last few laps, I'm sure, having a, a mirror full of Schumacher. But uh, as I set sail now, what a cracking shot. Last lap.
What a car race this has been. What a display for Fanatec GT World Challenge. What is this season going to bring us? That was awesome stuff. And full credit to Brad Schumacher. Cannot take it away from him. He was relentless in his attack for 20 minutes, Todd, through everything he possibly could. And it came down to a little one percenter at the end. But man, that was huge. Now, this is actually for track position. So I mentioned Liam Talbot has been blazing away. He's absolutely smoked the lap record. One minute, 26, 27 for Liam in this Ferrari. So this is to get a spot on the podium on the final lap of the race. And I'm sure if you're Liam Talbot, he'll be doing everything that he can in this final lap to redeem what obviously was a tough start to this, his first stint here behind the wheel of that Ferrari. And it's been fast all weekend. There's no word of a lie. So now what Schumacher's got to do, he's got to use that pace that he was trying to fight for the lead with. Get to the end. You can see you have a little wobble there out of Siberia. So a few, corner, a few corners left to go in this race. And uh, can Talbot get up the inside of uh, what is up just after Lukey Heights and MG. We know Schumacher was actually quite strong there, but this is going to be close. Meanwhile, the Audi is about to get the chequered flag. Doesn't look like there's a move on there. Schumacher up for it. While well, they've been calling it Team South Island, Tim Miles from Ashburton and Brendan Leach from Invercargill. Well, Team South Island has won race two. Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. Superb performance from Tim Miles in the defensive drive of his life to hold off Brad Schumacher. Paul Lachitti and Jaden Ojeda are going to finish second through all of that, having led early a really great anchor stint from the juice. And Schumacher holds off Liam Talbot at the end there. Gee, Liam threw everything at that. 100%. And that's GT3 racing at its best. Multiple makes, fighting for the, fighting for the podium. Awesome day of racing. Oh, that was cool. What an outstanding drive. And this guy should be so proud of himself with the way that he fended that off and anchored superbly by Brendan Leach at the start. The, the 10 second margin in the history books will not tell the real story of that race and how brilliant it was. Oh, Jada and Lucchetti next, and Will Brown and Schumacher. Well, at least they get a trophy tot after that. Yeah, exactly. And the way you can look at it, Schumacher left nothing on the table there. He gave it everything he could. He took every opportunity to try and get that race lead. And well, as I say, win it or bin it, and he's still got a trophy, so it's not all bad. He took the table, the silverware, the cutlery, the crockery, everything off that table <laughs> and won it all. And they're celebrating down there, Lee Stimation, the engineer, with Brendan Leach. So the highlights of the Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. Race two from the island. It'll be one we remember for a long time. And the sun bursts out. Garth Walden will remember the start. Wild moment, little bit of three wide. He was on the outside of all that contact and the Ram Motorsport AMG, unfortunately, would have dramas. This was the big turning point. Having been riding contention early on after Chas Mostert's start, Liam Talbot's car dropped into some issues and had to be power cycled before it could resume. Ultimately just missed out on the podium and the spin on his outlap didn't help the cause either. Tony Bates and Theo Kanduris were having a great fight in the two Mercedes. And then this, a fight between Brad Schumacher and Tim Miles that we'll remember and talk about for some time. It went on and on and on. And there was attempt after attempt, but Miles, he was unyielding in his defense. And Brad Schumacher ultimately lost the rear of his Audi R8 at the Southern Loop and then Liam Talbot on the final lap, having reset the Phillip Island lap record comfortably, just missed out on a podium. That was the chequered flag moment for the Dale ITM Audi. And that's the celebration moment for Brendan Leach and Tim Miles, who'll be rung out after that one. What a car race. Superb stuff. Let's celebrate this. But first, let's go down to Chris Stubbs. I think Chris, the boss, is going to be pleased with that race. Oh, yeah, that was a very cool example of what Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia, powered by AWS, can do. And you referred to him during the call as the godfather of GT racing. Stefan Rital is alongside me, Stefan. That was a great race. You must have enjoyed that as much as we did. Yeah, especially, I mean, it was exciting all through, but I think the first, uh, the beginning with three cars very close by with the Mercedes, the Ferrari and the Audi, all within a couple of tenths of seconds racing for more than half an hour 
uh, shows the, 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 the strengths of GT racing and the accuracy of the balance of performance. It is what we're about, offering close racing. Your SRO Motorsport Group, your organisation, has taken over the category management here in Australia. Of course, you've got legs in Asia, Europe and America as well. How proud are you about what you've got to offer here in Australia? What well, important is, you know, the Global Fanatec GT World Challenge is really bringing together four continental championships with, as you said, Europe, Asia, America and now Australia. We have nine manufacturers entered globally in this, in this Global Challenge. And what we want is to bring not only more cars, but more diversity. I mean, Ferrari, the return of Ferrari in Australia is, is the better, best news we could have had. But we want many more. We'd like to have the Aston, we'd like to have the Ford, we'd like to have uh, uh, the, the, old, or the Porsche, of course, the Porsche, the Lamborghini. I mean, all the brands which are not really competing at the top there. And, uh, and we will push for that. It's a good thing and it's only growing and getting better. And with some of those names you've just mentioned, we look forward to them joining the grid in the time to come. Thank you for your time and we appreciate all your efforts with our category. Thank you for supporting us. Thanks, Stubbsy. With Stefan Raitel, the CEO of the SRO Motorsports Group, who looks after this incredible category. What a race, Cameron. There's going to be some celebrations down in Victory Lane. Yeah, while you're highlighting the Pro-Am just before, the AM winner, Ash Samadi, in a big battle with Tony Bates. Congratulations, the race winner for uh, the Fanatec GT World. Thank you, sir. It was, uh, it was a good result after not being able to qualify, starting at the back of the grid. Bit of gearbox problem and brake problem in the race one. It's a godsend. Well done, Ash. Congratulations. Great drive. Great job. We're going to sneak over to two very happy drivers. I'm going to steal them over very quickly. I'm going to grab Tim Miles first. Tim Miles. Mate, and now, come on, Brendan. Brendan Leach, this was a team effort. Now, Tim, towards the end, you had your stable mate there with you. What great racing that was to the end, but you managed to hold him out. Yeah, it was fantastic. He was really, really uh, clean and kind. There was a couple of places where I thought he was going to have a lunge and he didn't, uh, thank goodness, because there's marbles out wide. And, you know, particularly turn one, if he had thrown it down the inside there, it would have been really hard to defend from. So um, I appreciate how clean he raced and uh, it was fantastic for, for Brendan and I. I mean, it's pretty easy to bring, a, bring it home when you get given it in such a good position. So it was fantastic, a lot of fun. And Brendan, you were riding all the waves of emotion there. We had you on the coverage. Will Brown called you over. Great camaraderie in there, but uh, you must be so happy. Oh, so, so happy. Tim drove amazing. I didn't know he could drive the wheels over that good. So um, super blocking and defended like an absolute champion. Kept us cool and, um, yeah, crazy. Awesome to get our first win. I think it's my first ever GT3 uh, official win, so maybe you'll yours as well. <laughs> cool, fantastic. No, I've won with Jackson on nah. 17, so, yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you one more question each because the, we've got this number one here, the Fanatec GT World Challenge here in Australia. It's incredible. The speed series is really growing. We've got a record crowd, Tim. You've been there through the highs and lows of motorsport. It just feels like it's on a big growth cycle. Oh, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, the way that the series is organised now, so the, the, the pros ro race the pros, the uh, AMs race the AMs, so it, it means that you're getting weighed and measured against people of your own um, uh, standard, and, and it just makes for such good racing. Like, it was fantastic. And Brendan, the last question for you, mate. It's great to see GT racing in this part of the world, Australia and New Zealand's huge audience on Seven Sport in New Zealand. You must be proud of what we're pumping out down this part of the world. Yeah, I am, absolutely. The, the competition here is amazing. The professionalism is incredible as well. It's just like racing uh, anywhere around the world. Love it. And, um, yeah, everyone here is a lot, having a lot of fun and enjoying themselves at the same time, which is, I think, the most important part of it too. Well, well done, both of you. Congratulations, and we'll see you next time out. See you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. That was an epic race. What a start to Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. Two fantastic one-hour races here this weekend, Stubbsy. And kind of the, the younger brother, if you will, we had a great roll-up for, uh, for Monochrome GT4 too, didn't we? Oh, so good. We have been treated with some outstanding racing. And we've still got more to come on 7 Plus as well with the Super Cheap Auto TCR race. And from what we've seen from them so far today, that's going to be action-packed. But how good to have the prancing horse, the Ferrari back here in GT racing. They may not have had the win there today, but to have them as part of this grid and what was offered up then by the drivers and all the teams was remarkable, wasn't it? And I think what Stefan said there is something we probably need to highlight, underscore, if Porsche, Lamborghini yeah. join the fray as our season continues. The next stop on the tour for Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia and indeed for the Shannon Speed Series is in South Australia at the magic new Ben Circuit and what a venue it is for this style of racing too. So join us 
toward the end of May, early June, the uh, the final weekend of May, beginning of June there. That is going to be uh, terrific. That is just to uh, reiterate what Chris said there too, for our viewers on 7, mate, we are about to say goodbye to you. But if you're enjoying your racing this afternoon, it continues on 7 Plus with Super Cheap Auto TCR Australia, their final race of the weekend here. From the rest of us, though, it's bye for now.